everyone. It's Elizabeth Wood and we're doing New Earth Conversations and I get to talk with my dear friend, my colleague, Meg Archambault. She is a soul worker and a huge, deep, loving friend of humanity. She loves to help people really dig down deep into their biggest blocks and really, really see the truth of their inner dignity and their power. She's an empowerment being. And I'm so proud to get to share your knowledge with everyone today, Meg. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so happy to be here. And of course, I always love being with you. So this is an extra special bonus. Yeah, we do have some really good fun together. And it just happens so easily. I love that. It's very precious. So my first question for you today is, from your vantage point, what are you seeing is happening for humankind at the moment from the inside out what do you perceive where are we at right now yeah i in, in working with clients and also being able to look at what's happening out in the world you know the the vision that comes to me right now elizabeth is a um like we're all up against a wall like literally our noses are right against a wall and we don't know where to go because everything that has happened in the past is not working. And so we are being forced, right? You could say that, but we're not really being forced because we know we're actually creating these experiences. But it feels like we are all being forced to um, look at, feel, be with every single thing that has blocked us um, throughout our whole lives. Um, whether that is any kind of trauma or um, wounding or resistance or um, opportunities, it's all just right in our face and it's all, it's all coming in simultaneously and it's all coming in at once because it so much wants to be seen and recognized and as I'm sure we'll talk about more later, appreciated for what it is. Um, we just can't go forward anymore, dragging everything behind us. And so it's all right up in our faces. And I'm sure we'll talk about today. Um, I don't even know if you can hear the siren that's going around in the background. Like, it's like that I'm is, right? <laughs> yeah, that is exactly what I'm talking about. That's um, everything. You, if you look around you, everything is a sign that's saying this is what we're about here. Um, it could be a parade. We have graduates that are graduating, but, um, but it's, it feels like that in our bodies, that it's an emergency. Like the time is now, it's emergency. Things are on fire. That was a fire engine and the, the fire is on. It's lighting us, it's lighting us, you know, under us to get us moving and to say, Hey, now is the time for all of us. It's super, um, it's super brilliant too, because we we're looking to one side and the other. We're looking at our teachers, we're looking at our clients, we're looking at our families, and we're all feeling the same thing. Every single one of them is aware of this moment, and it's a big choice point, really. And I think, um, as you're describing it, it's an emergency. And in human evolution, we have these punctuated points in time where humans get pushed to the brink before they make really big changes. When there's a big paradigm shift or a revolution, it occurs because it became an emergency. It had to occur. There was no choice anymore. And here we are, we're capable of making this shift very consciously as a globe, which has never happened before. So not only is it an emergency, it's a brand new emergency. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So and we, from your yeah. personal experiences, what, um, what are people really feeling at the moment besides this perhaps big panic? What are some of the really specific frequencies that you're noticing? You know, it's... Um, it's all across the board. So it, it's, it's, so for example, um, I'm just going to mention some clients, not by name, but just the experiences that I have had with clients. So, so some are looking at their lives where um, 
they've gotten to a certain point in their evolution in their personal journey. Um, most have done a ton of work already and they're at a place in front of this wall and they're at a, a loss for how to move forward because the old things perhaps aren't working. They, they think they know how to process or they thought they knew how to do, you know, take whatever astrology or whatever, but it feels like they're looking around saying, I don't know what's what next. I don't know what tool to use in order to go forward. So it could be, I see things in relationships coming up where, you know, if a relationship was going on along smoothly and now all of a sudden there's, you know, tension or there's um, an up leveling of, um, you know, anger or reaction. That's one thing. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing is energy levels that someone who might've been really, you know, full force, full of energy is just now flatline saying, I don't know what's happening. You know, I'm being, you know, you know, forced to rest. I don't know how to do that. Um, others are taking their, um, the intellectual approach where I've always been a, a thinker and I've tried to um, find solutions with my brain and now that's not working. So how do I get in my body like people are telling me to do? How do I merge with something? Because that's a language that's out there and that we're using that now. And even you and I have been teaching, you know, welcoming um, and people are like, well, how actually do you do that? Because you can't just welcome with your brain. You have to welcome with your body. And how can I welcome something when I don't even know what that feels like? So it's really a strange time where the things that have worked perhaps to get them to the point up to where we are right now are no longer working. And it's, it's like that choice point. So now I have to, it's almost like I have to unhook and un, un, detach from the things that I've been attached to that have worked in order to get to the place where something new is coming, right? We can't, we can't, you know, we can't do things the way that they, they were yesterday even. Today, today, you know, is even different than yesterday. Um, so those are three of the examples of something that I've seen lately. And that can create so much stress, right? Because here people feel blocked. Almost everyone we're talking to pretty much feeling really blocked. They feel like they're in like uh, so, something like I like to call it the spiritual coat closet where you can't go backwards. You can't really go forwards and you're being asked to shed something or change it or find a new tool and you don't know what to do and you got to get creative in the dark. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And you're spinning, right? That's the other thing. You're either spinning or you're in quicksand and you don't know how to move forward. And so it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's all up for us. And, um, and even, you know, we can look outside ourselves and people are asking themselves, well, how can I contribute? How can I be the change? And that really links into what we're talking about today, because as you and I always say, right, you have to change starts from within. We have to start from within. And I think what's just coming through right now is that it's not selfish or self-centered or self-involved to come inside because we can, we can only touch what's happening on the inside of us because it is a mirror, right? The inside is the outside, the outside is the inside. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's where we can begin. We can begin knowing that it's not selfish to do the self-inquiry. It's not selfish to heal myself because as I do, I heal the world. And that's been this message that has been very consistent and dependable. And what else do you see as sort of the foundation that we're going to build on here in our interview? We've got this idea that we, it's not selfish to do self-inquiry and do self-healing. It's okay to need to tweak tools and maybe set some aside and search out for new ones and that it's that you were not alone that most of us are feeling up against the wall and we're in this together what what's some other concepts that you're noticing that would help people feel like okay this is something that everyone's going through yeah i actually I think that is a really big point elizabeth because you know it's like in these times of stress and tension there's a habit that i see to have have um the, the dialogue in the head go, what's wrong with me? Um, or I'm doing something wrong. And that can feel very isolating and, and very alone. Like I'm the only one that feels like I'm going through quicksand or I'm the only one that blew up at my spouse today or I'm the only one that's you know, pulling my hair out and feeling so lethargic. And so I think that's the very first 
piece right there, like you said, is for us to genuinely from our heart right now, let people know that they're not alone and that there's nothing wrong. Right. I, I mean, I've been going through this the past few days myself because it, it feels like everything that I've already put to bed, so to speak, as, as far as I thought I've cleared so much is back up in my face. And it's easy to think, oh, I forgot I didn't do this yet. It's just coming up again to get maybe remnants of things that we haven't cleared um, or we're ready to step into the next place within evolution. And so it's coming up as a gift, right? As we say, in order to be seen for like the final clearance sale almost, you know, like this is what you forgot or this is what you might not have welcomed before. So, so we just want to make sure that everyone knows that let's just take a breath, a moment and say, oh, I'm not alone. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with me or even the world. And that's a whole other topic, but there's just, if we can step into a little bit of tr tr trust, right? That, that let's just have a little bit of trust that something is here and happening for us, that we're not alone here, you and I, but there's also, you know, the greater we're not alone, that there is a bigger plan and process. And we are here um, supporting that plan as it unfolds as best as we can. So our job is to do our own internal healing so that we can be this little, you know, this little pinpoint of light over here is doing this healing. This little pinpoint of light over here is doing this healing. And so what we can't see is that all these pinpoints of light are making a difference to light up the world and to allow new energies to come through. Whereas we're just seeing our own little pinpoint of light. We don't know that we're all in this together. So it's important, so important that you do your work. Don't stop. Don't feel like you're up against the wall and it's time to stop. No, that's just the sign that says, no, now's the time to move forward. Maybe that wall is just a little small film or a veil that if I just lean into it a little bit with some kindness and some love and appreciation and understanding for it, that it'll start to dissolve a little bit enough so that I can poke my head through what I thought was this hard wall. And I can see and I can feel what it's like on the other side. And then the whole body can go, ah, I don't have to be as panicked. I don't have to be in fight or flight or freeze or emergency mode. I can literally relax and trust that this is unfolding perfectly. Right? So I'll just offer that the three things that are really, really big for me when I think about helping others create a foundation of healing. Um, it's just a, a simple three things, to be present, to be embodied, and to be receptive. Is it okay if I talk about those for a little bit? Yeah, that's the next question is, all right, so that's the foundation, and now we're gonna rebuild the house. We're gonna rebuild, we, we're gonna play with some new tools, and so what are these tools that we're going to use to rebuild ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, and this is not to say that these are the only tools there's, you know, so many tools out there, but I know you and I, you know, work closely together and this is what's worked for us, you know, and we, we will talk about this later, but we, we shared this in a seven day and a seven week course, um, heal yourself to heal the world. And we're making this available, you know, for everyone because, we, we just know it works, right? And so we, we want to share it with as many people as possible. And, um, and so for me, the foundation, you know, number one, to be present, you know, it's a, it's a large word, you know, to be in the now, it gets a lot of talk. Um, but in order to do emotional processing, in, in order to clear something, we have to be present in the now, of course, which means for me, it's pulling in the energies from the future, like literally pulling them into the now, pulling in the energies from the past into the now, and even aside myself to the now so that I can be 100% fully and totally inside myself in this now moment. Um, and I even use it as, it's almost as being the centered self. I can't process or heal something within me if I'm in the wound. Do you know what I mean? I can't 
heal from the wounded place. I can't heal from the traumatized place. I can only begin to heal from this little, little tiny space of soft, quiet, inner silence of the now. And that also requires embodiment, right? So being present, be present, be embodied, which means I can't do any kind of healing if I'm outside my body. I can't do any healing if I'm just living from the neck up. I can't think my way. I can't strategize my way. I certainly have tried. I know you have too. I can't do anything by thinking it through and analyzing through, but I have to learn or get support in learning how to drop from the head, not only from the head to the heart, but from the head into the shoulders, into the torso, into the bottom of my torso, into the legs and the feet to be 100% fully embodied. And so I'm doing this as I'm speaking in hopes that a transmission can come through, that everybody on the call can feel the dropping. And even as I start to drop, there's more space, there's more quiet, the brain starts to slow down any voices, so I'm being present, I'm in my body, I'm feeling my toes, I'm feeling myself on the chair. And then the, the, the final piece of the foundation that I think is so important is from that present and embodied state to be able to in, in very, very slow steps, stop the outward movement to come at least to a neutral place where you're not trying to do anything, you're not trying to make anything happen, but rather to, to be receptive, to open up the receptors to re receive. Now that may not make some sense intellectually, but Let's just feel into it because if I'm, if I'm trying to right, clear something, right? We talk a lot about healing and clearing. You know, and I think in the past, the energy was around pushing through blockages, right? Moving them by getting rid of them. In fact, we even did exercises 10, 15 years ago where we would you know, imagine that the blockage or the thing that was holding me back was behind me and I pushed my way forward to get rid of it. You know, you and I have a whole different approach now, and that is really to turn around and look at these blockages from being present and being embodied. And to be receptive means I'm opening up my arms to literally welcome whatever this trauma is, whatever these blockages are, because I am aligned with the present embodied soul me that can welcome the bigger me, that can welcome any small trauma, any small trigger, any small blockage, because I'm the one who's allowing it to dissolve into me. And I'll just give you this visual. And then if we wanna talk some more about it, you know how if you, if you see a little baby and they're just so delicious, I know that's kind of crazy. We just like, we wanna eat them up. We wanna take them in. We wanna just like, oh, we just wanna bring them into us. You know, it's the same thing. If we can just imagine taking anything like, you know, victimhood or um, a trauma of any kind um, or a resistance or a um, aggression and turning towards it with, with presence and embodiment and an and attitude and a willingness of opening up to welcome and receive and thank and really, really want to merge and embrace this aspect, right? So I'm just coming towards the camera like, I, will, I just wanna embrace it and bring it into me. That's the difference I think that you and I are talking about, that it's this loving embrace of presence that all trauma and all patterns are wanting. And that's an important part, let's just highlight that. All trauma, all patterns, all blockages, every angst, every, every irritation is wanting to be seen and acknowledged and recognized and, and appreciated and welcomed. That's all it's wanting, right? 
it's amazing how much power something has over us when we resist it, deny it, walk, try to walk around it. And, and we end up on this spiral path where, oh, there it is again. Oh, there it is again <laughs> until it's seen fully. And I love that we can start out with our senses and say, how, if I wiggle my toes, how does that feel? If I take a deep breath, we're always in receiving. And it's not just a feminine attribute. It's a human attribute. We're receiving light through our eyes. We're receiving sound and taste and touch and air. And then from there, it's receiving emotions and frequencies as well. And when we try to mentally create preference or dislike, then we end up in the hamster wheel of the mind and spin, spin, spin until we feel crazy and we feel lost and we feel flustered and chaotic. And exactly. So mirroring back what you're saying is turn around, look at the thing you're trying to run away from. It is just like you. It wants to be seen. Victimhood, there you are. Hello, victimhood. It hurts when I'm around you, but I welcome that. I welcome even the hurt of the victimhood. And when you welcome it, it gets what it needs. It actually opens it up. It releases the pressure, right? So that it becomes lighter. And then victimhood doesn't have power over us like a ball and chain anymore. It's something we can dissolve with our attention and our feeling. Mm -hmm. And that is so unique. It truly is a unique way of functioning. And, and tell us more about these tools. What uh, Besides this sensing and welcoming and turning our attention to it with such gentle lovingness that even the worst feeling can be loved what else, what else can someone do to practice with this concept, which we've named as merging, basically? Walk us through a little bit about the how-to on the merging piece, if you would. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a great, great description of how to approach something. Because for, for, first of all, um, you know, when you're in a trigger or you're in a trauma, you have to first pause and this is is a lot of what i teach you have to first find a way to have yourself pause and step back before you turn towards something because otherwise you're trying to process something from within the actual reaction from in the trigger so it's okay if you put notes on your windows or your door and that say pause it's somehow just to stop stop the energy and pause because otherwise you're spinning so you have to stop and pause first to find a witness and say, oh, I'm in a process now. I'm triggered now. I'm being reactive now. And you'll, of course, after spending two plus months at home, you know, with family inside the home, things are hot, right? I mean, it's the fire is on. And so what I hear is, you know, for myself included, that any little, any little facial expression from my husband to me now. It could, it could just trigger, trigger something inside me, right? <laughs> exactly. And so if this is happening exponentially for all of us in cars, driving, um, with family members, being out in public, wearing masks where you're hot and you're bothered and you're irritated. Gosh, every single thing is an opportunity. It doesn't even have to be a big you know, trauma or explosion. It could be a really small, um, subtle trigger. But if you can stop and pause just for a moment to step back and say, oh, I recognize that I am triggered. I recognize that I'm in a process. I recognize that I am not myself, right? That's the first thing. And this is one so hard. Don't try to fix it right away, right? Because the fixing of it is saying, you're bad trigger. You're a bad trauma. I've got to get rid of you right? If I'm feeling like I was just victimized because my, 
you know, my friend or something came at me and attacked me with some words on social media or set, something like that. I want to immediately fix it. And so what you and I are trying to communicate is that this is nothing to be fixed. This is nothing to even be cleared. And we don't even really have the, the proper language, you know, the older languages to fix something or solve a problem or um, and really even clear something has a, an old kind of energy about it. We're not talking about getting rid of anything. We are just saying stop and pause and be the witness to say, oh, okay, let me see what's happening here. Let me get my soul self in, intact and on board. Let me breathe and feel my body and get inside myself. Okay, now I can witness myself and see that I am triggered and I feel that somebody pulled in front of me from a car. I feel like I have just been victimized or I am stuck having to wear a mask. Having to wear a mask, I feel like I'm being smothered. And so I would stop, pause, and only after I stop trying to fix or change something, then I can turn towards it with an open heart. And if you can't get an open heart yet, that's okay. If you're still finding your head saying, I don't like being the victim. I don't want to be the victim. I, I cleared my victimhood. Then what you can do is you, you thank and you appreciate whatever is showing itself. So you can turn to the mind and say, oh, mind, I see you. You don't want to like this victim. You're right. You've worked really hard to clear victimhood. And I can see what you say, you're saying. We don't want to go towards this. So thank you so much for protecting me. Ah, thank you, mind. And you can feel even if that energy right there and that energetic movement, it's, it's being seen. The mind is being seen and you're thanking it for its value. And in me, it tends to quiet down. Sometimes you can say, could you step to the side for a moment because we're gonna really go deeper into the body and feel where this victim is lying in my body, where it's resting. And usually the mind will be quiet enough so that you can then turn towards this. And what I mean by that is actually literally turning with my, you know, when we're in our imagination, the, the imagination usually looks outward. So what we're doing is we're turning with the imagination and coming inside in order to kind of do a body scan. The embodiment piece is feeling in the body. Oh, where does this victimhood feel like it rests? in my body oh it's in my leg right now or now it moved into my belly or or truly if it's a real feeling if we're getting to the feeling part of this it's usually in the torso you know I personally feeling experience you know grief in my heart and right here in the center but the anger down further in my belly and and it and fear really right in the solar plexus that's where it's like the deepest and so if I can right ask all of us right now to imagine, we can even imagine with our eyes open, turning in, coming into the body and saying, oh, victimhood. Oh, the feeling of helplessness. Oh, I can feel you right inside there. And you know what? Something else might pop up. Anger might pop up. I'm not doing this. I refuse to do this. And then you just do the same process to whatever shows up. Anger. I hear you. I see you. You're welcome here too. I appreciate, it seems like you really wanna protect me. You are doing a great job. Thank you so much, Anger. You are so welcome here. And that will allow for another layer to dissolve so I can get closer to ultimately what's at the bottom of every process for me and for those that I've worked with is fear and terror. And, and it's actually, Elizabeth, I think you, we, we've experienced this, it's terror of disillusion, of the egoic structure dissolving and leaving what's left. Who's left if I dissolve all this? What's left is light and spaciousness and silence and stillness. And sometimes we're just so afraid of that that we actually create unbeknownst to ourselves, all these blockages and all these patterns, protections, victimhood, tyrant, rescuer even, you know, I'm going to be in and I'm going to rescue and be the savior. All of these roles, all these identities, we've, we've created them 
to protect ourselves from actually feeling who we truly are, which is this incredible, beautiful spaciousness. And so, you know, it takes time to go through each of these layers in a process. But what you and I have experienced, I believe, over time is that it's worth taking the time to learn this so that you can become a master at it, so that you can ultimately just turn towards something and with a glance, with a loving embrace of appreciation and validation and presence, even the darkest, stickiest, most dense piece of trauma or trigger can start to loosen and dissipate because that's really what we're talking about is the dissipation the dissolution dissolving of chunks of density does that help oh yeah yes <laughs> so traumas are traumas and triggers are treasure <laughs> say that fast yeah <laughs> triggers are treasure they're treasure because when you're able to go into them, allow them, notice them, they become dissolved, and then they show you the next greatest sort of root cause of any issue. And as you keep going through these layers, they become, it becomes a lifestyle where you're aware of the trigger and you even turn towards it and allow it and you, you go into it so quickly with practice, that's why we urge this as a, take the time to do this privately in your own space first. And as you get used to it, you're gonna do it all day long. It becomes a lifestyle of light as we call it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I hear you saying is that you're trying to help people come into being the soul, the soul in charge. The soul in charge is the witness state. And it's such a challenge to, talk about the witness state because that's been a concept that's been around for a long time but we've often used the witness state outside of ourselves oh just witness people witness what's going on witness abc and now we're saying go in go in to be the witness you are not your mind you are not your anger you are not your terror you're not even your body <laughs> You are in these things and they are right on the edge of their seat waiting for you, waiting for you to see them, waiting for you to talk to them, to work with them. I think that's so special and how we can even talk to frequency or we talk to the mind. Hey mind, wow, thank you. Gratitude, gratitude immediately creates a witness state. Wow, thank you, anger, you've been trying to protect me. Wow, thank you, victim, you're trying to help me too. And what a very different, completely, that's a cultural paradigm shift for real. When you're in this, and you've been practicing this for ages, now that you've been able to play with it, how has this affected your personal life, how has it affected you and your healing and, and then your ultimate surroundings? What kind of changes do you see when someone plays with this set of concepts? Mm, yeah, yeah, this, this is a big question because it's gonna tie back to the reason that this is foundational. Um, because a lot of times I'm, I'm I'm, I've been doing this myself for a lot of years. I'll see the shiny light, you know, like, oh, um, there's, there's a shiny piece of spirituality over here. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go, you know, take that course. And I'm not saying there's anything against courses. There's nothing against what I've done, you know, for 30 plus years. Um, but this technology, this energetic technology, it, it, it's, it's, it's quickened my evolutionary journey. It has um, speeded up everything and anything that I've ever done in the past. And, and that's the point that I think I want to run with and hit home with, that there's no right or wrong ways and there's no right or wrong tools or paths. But, but what you and I have found through our teachers and our own experiences 
is like the direct route. You know, it's like, do not pass, go, 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 you know, it's like go directly to jail. You know, it's like, no, we're not going to jail. We're going directly to source, right? It's like, we're going directly to source through love by utilizing the open heart, the welcoming and the love. It takes us the direct path to source rather than, you know, going in different directions. And so I've actually seen a lot of people come to me. They've done so much work, but this is a foundational piece that has been missing because they've been trained to go to the higher realms first or the, um, the perceived to be more enlightened spaces. And this has to come with us. That's why it's a foundation. That's why we're so, um, we care so much about helping people utilize these tools because we don't have time, you know, we don't want to take the time to take the long route anymore. Let's go directly to source. And we do that by these tools of coming towards and welcoming and allowing and receiving. And so for me, um, we can just say, you know, for, you know, it seems my early 20s, so for 30 plus years, I've been doing, you know, the typical books and workshops and courses, and yet it hasn't, you know, maybe in the past 10 years, I've been playing with these, these tools of welcoming, but full on, probably for the past two or three years, you know, I've been making it a daily practice. And as you said, it's become a lifestyle where now it is not a, a have to or even a challenge. Well, let me take a step back. We are all under the fire right now. And so I personally, Elizabeth knows this, I had a loss in our family this week. Uh, my father-in-law just passed away about three days ago. And so that added to the fire of everything else that's going on outside in the world. And I found myself in some spins, right? And so I'm not saying that this takes away, but the spin happens, um, it's shorter and perhaps less intense because there's still a witness that's been trained to even watch the spin as it's happening. It may take a day or so to be like, oh yes, I am creating this spin. That's right, I am the creator being who's creating this spin and these dramas. Now I can step back and witness myself and let's take it piece by piece. All right, grief, right? Shock and grief, you are welcome here. Let me feel in my body Right there it is, see? It's right there on the tip of my chest. The intense grief that's still wanting to be processed in layers, right, in my body. So, so it's a practice that has, for me, allowed me to stop the spin much more quickly, to be able to come in and feel real feelings in the body and get very, very intimate with a feeling so that I'm not pushing it away. And you know what happens when we get intimate with a feeling and we do this process, it just evaporates. And, it, and then another layer comes up. The, the, the thing that we're all experiencing, and this is just coming to me now, is that you know, anything that's happening in our lives right now, it feels like it's an echo. It's trying to, it's pointing to something more deep right? So like, let's say, for example, this loss of my father-in-law triggered or brought up in me the fact that I lost my father 28 years ago. Well, 28 years ago, I didn't have these tools, right? I just did the normal, typical, how you grieve, you know, and I used what I had then. But now I had the opportunity to kind of reprocess 28 years worth of grief, you know, from that. So each trigger is linked to a, another trigger, and if you can find the triggers as you go and kind of link them up and almost like pull the thread of all these traumas, you're pulling and clearing or healing traumas from 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years ago, past life, ancestral, you name it. Everything's coming up for us. And so that's one of the things that I had the opportunity to do is clear some and heal some old trauma and grief from my father that's produced more light. Right. Mm -hmm. another, another example I would say is around um, uh, you know, victimhood. I've done a lot of work and, and you'll hear us talk, especially in the, um, the ebook, if you decide to join us and um, take the, um, the online um, study, self-study pace workshop that we're putting out. Um, we'll talk about um, polarities 
and a process called squares. And you'll, you'll hear all about it and read all about it. But when I look at a polarity of, for example, the victim and the tyrant, my kind of polarity of choice over my life has been the victim. I would always step into vic victim worthlessness as kind of my, um, my, my, my um, protection of choice. So I've done a lot of um, welcoming of that over the years. And it's up in the collective. And so of course it'll be up in my body. And so I get a chance to really, really look at and of course welcome and see where I am, even in the slightest bit, um, bringing in and using a victim um, perspective to keep myself safe. And another one I'll show you is the, um, you know, soon after my father-in-law passed away the other day, I was just in a state of, of, of awareness, like true awareness of the preciousness of life. And I could really, my witness is really strong. It could feel subtle layers of selfishness. And I don't say that with judgment, but I say this as a witness that what's coming up is this layer. I get a chance to see the, the layers of, agenda that I have or the preferences that I have. I wish he would have, you know, stayed with us another day. And, and I automatically, because of this mastery or processing, I can not judge myself for these things. I can truly appreciate, oh, hello, selfishness. Hello, small I. Of course you would want this. Of course. Oh, yes, I see you. And so ultimately, I think Elizabeth, when I get to the bottom of any process for myself, I find, I find this for my clients too, that quiet spaciousness of silence and stillness and expanse, expansion. So if you think of it this way, the more that I find triggers or treasures, and the more that I've learned how to process these as a lifestyle, the more pieces of expansion I can touch on. And each piece of expansion, as it kind of builds up against each other, it has produced, it's produced an ease of being able to get there without a trauma. And that is priceless. To be able to access kind of spaciousness, quietness, soul alignment, sovereignty on demand by coming in my body and remembering, remembering who I am as spaciousness. That allows me to then do life from a much more calm, creative place. So the creativity is enhanced. Um, spiritual gifts come back online, right? Soul gifts, spiritual gifts, and the essence, the true essence of who this being called Meg is, um, is more profoundly um, in charge or online or available to me in my life, which affects my life, my husband, my family, my stepdaughter, my, my immediate family, because I'm coming and I'm, I'm living from that space more and more often. Of course, not all the time, but, but to live from that space, to create from that space, to have my soul gifts and my essence more readily available, to be of service from that place and share, you know, as we're doing today, this is what we want for others. Imagine more of these soul essences being the primary place that people are operating from. Imagine what we can do to heal the world right? Because we've started with ourselves. Ah, genius. I love especially too with this ability to be in witness that you end up facing something like the loss of your beloved father-in-law who was a very special and deeply loved person without that becoming a trauma. It ends the process of all of this pressure coming into our lives and building up as trauma. And not only that, it shows you then what traumas still need examined. And 
then you get to do even more expansiveness through the welcoming of those layers too. It's really a win-win because you don't end up building up any extra trauma. You don't, then you can really look at any other trauma that might be related to it and dissolve that too. Cause sometimes we don't even, it doesn't even show up until an event that's similar shows up in the life. So like, you know, a, a fight with somebody is gonna end up reminding me of similar fights. And then you end up being able to shift massive amounts of trauma and then finding more and more expansiveness. Now, both you and I can attest that with that expansive witness state, the people around us heal faster, they heal deeper. The changes in our partners have been immense and measurable. The changes in our kids have been immense and measurable. Um, and so that sort of equation is true, it's real. If you are working on you and you just focus in on that, if you really want change outside of yourself, it's gonna start there. And it's true, it's absolutely physically, mentally, emotionally, measurably true that that self-inquiry creates expansiveness for everything you touch. And it's so much more creative and free and sovereign. And I just love that light, that truth of, hey, that makes room for our essence to come through. And let's define essence real quick for people. Because I think it's an important topic because more and more people's soul's essence are wanting to really come online and be seen. I like to define essence as the, the first note of your soul in your soul's song. It's the first note. It's the very first time your soul became individuated. There was that baby step away from source or from source emanating from source. There's that first frequency that came through and yours is dignity, the dignity of all things. Tell us a little bit about what that's like to live in an essence and how that feels. What is that like? What can people start to look for in themselves as their essence really comes in to fill in that space and fill it with light and fill the body and the mind and the spirit with light? Yeah. You know, um, the, I think the thing that I've always searched for, right, of my whole life is how can I be the authentic Meg? How can I be me? I even wrote a children's storybook called Be Me Bear because it's been a passion of mine. How do you be, you know, people just say, well, be you. Well, that's really not so easy because we have these layers and layers of protection. Um, and so we're trying to be ourselves and it gets distorted through these densities, through these protections and traumas and triggers. And oh, we haven't even talked and mentioned um, frozen aspects of ourselves, identities, roles, you name it. And so it's really hard for the essence to kind of get through, to shine through. I guess the analogy that's, that's coming to me is, you know, the, um, the statue of David, right? Like the, the, I know Michelangelo could see David through the marble. And I always use this as an example to say, you know, David was in there wanting to come out. And what Michelangelo had to do is carve away everything that was unlike David in order to expose David. But he could see David inside. He knew he existed inside there. And so I see that in terms of that's what we're doing with, with processing, with emotional clearing, with what we're, everything we're talking about today about healing. We are um, dissolving everything that's unlike love. We're dissolving everything that's unlike Meg, the essence of Meg, or the essence of Elizabeth, right? The essence of Elizabeth being wonder, the essence of Meg being dignity. We're dissolving everything that's unlike us so that the fragrance or the frequency of ourselves just is. It's not a doing where, oh, dignity is now going to do something, right? And, and you, you and I both work with Lucia Renee. And as Lucia would say to me, Meg, it's not, you're not doing dignity. You're sitting back into dignity. You're sitting back into the dignity of all existence. And I love to feel it as off the, it's like an easy chair, 
right? If my awareness is always out in front of me and the doer is out in front of me, I'm coming back and I'm sitting back and I'm resting into the core of light, into the, the dignity of all existence of who I am. And so it's a, it's a, it's a beingness it, and I can't try to do it. I mean, I can try to do it and I've tried to do it a lot, right? But the trying is not the being of it. And it only comes back online the more and more that I dissolve everything that's unlike the true essence of Meg. So that when enough has been dissolved, right, that light, that light of essence of dignity can kind of screech through the cracks, come out every once in a while, right? And now that more and more has been dissolved, right, more can come out more often. And it just to me shows up when I'm not trying but when I'm at home inside myself, that sitting backwards. So if I were to just even say that, let me, I can't do dignity right now, but if I can sit back, you know, for me, it feels like this grand old welcoming that, whole, that, that the essence of Meg holds everything with dignity, right? I imagine it almost as being like that the arms of my essence are, are way far out and they are welcoming every trauma, every frozen um, aspect of myself, every child, every teenager, any part of Meg that got contracted. And it's saying, you all are loved and welcome here. I hold you with equal dignity. Even the parts that you so haven't liked for so many years, they are all welcome and, and dignity here. Wonder how, it experience, how do you experience it as wonder? Yeah, it's very similar. I'll look at the different parts of me and I'm like, uh, like at one point I had a psychologist say, you should write your life out in a timeline. And I, cause I told him I was so sick and tired of telling my sob story. Right. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll do that. And so I started this timeline and I tried to make it really pretty cause it was such a horror, horrifying timeline. <laughs> I had like really, I'd make it like really pretty calligraphy, like this horrible thing happened. It looks pretty though, at least. Um, and so finally I had this timeline. I worked on it for a while because different memories would come up to be put on the timeline. And I pulled it out and I looked at him like, this is amazing. I can't believe I'm still alive. Of course I feel this way. This is amazing. It's wonderful to see it as it is. And that was the beginning of that feeling of being in wonder all the time. The anger will show up. This is amazing. My husband's freaking out. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, and there's that joy, that, that incredible joy that comes in from being in wonder all the time. It's a free fall. You really do end up leaning into it. And, and I told someone, I feel like I'm falling, but then it's this free fall. It's very intense. It's the constant feeling that you get when you're like on a, a roller coaster and you have that whew, feeling on the roller coaster. It's constantly like that. And then I realized, wow, there's no ground. I'm not going to hit the ground. So what is that really? I'm flying. I'm, I really am in the sensation of flying all the time. And it's, it creates an, an immense amount of joy that's, that at first is overwhelming because the body wants to hold on and be in control and you surrender to it. You surrender all the control and you, you fall back into source. You fall back into your essence. And then from there it does, it, it burns the candle at two ends. It, shows you what the baggage is from that pure if if like the soul timeline is showing up he, these two are lighting up here's the attention as meg or elizabeth or whomever and here's the soul's essence who's really powered up that whole timeline for the soul and that soul's essence gets lit up when you're searching for it you're allowing it you want it it lights up this end and it shows you what all the blockages are, but it helps you. It helps you to 
burn the candle at both ends so you can meet together and be it together. And that is this full body sensation of light. And it's so brilliant. It's brilliant because it shifts away the old way we were taught to function with shadow is to not put our attention on it in fear that it would grow. And it's the other way around. We go and we find the shadow and we love it and we hug it and we become it. And then suddenly we find that it was never shadow at all, that it was made of light in the first place. And then you do it with the next shadow and the next one and the next one. And you find shadows that are old and you find ones that are new and you keep going until you end the polarities altogether because then it's all perfect. And it's such, an, um, it's such a privilege. It's truly a privilege. We, we are very privileged, you and I, to have teachers who gave us this information for us to practice and build on, because we certainly have modified these techniques on our own, and we hope that you all will too, because we built on our teachers' techniques. It, we haven't remained the same in them perfectly at all. We continue to play with them, experiment, modify it's what we're supposed to do for evolution. But we were able to, in our privilege with this information, then co-create something together. And that's what I want to lean into now is then, once you begin to play and it becomes less work. It becomes more playful. It becomes like, ooh, when is the next trigger going to show up? <laughs> and then you get to play, and then you're going to start to find souls and essences who want to come and play with you. And that's what happened to us. It was very natural and spontaneous in a way. It was, I, I vaguely even remember us first talking about it, right? Where we were like, let's do this. Okay, well, let's just schedule it. And we didn't even have to really talk about it. It just happened. And then it came forth and we put a lot of work into it. We spent over a year working on this. Uh, what we, We've been calling an interactive ebook self-guided retreat of sorts. And people can do it as fast or as slow and as many times as they like because you get a lifetime access to it. Um, but the the beauty of what came through because we had been playing in this work for so long, it got magnified immensely in everything we did together. And this to me is the new paradigm of healing is co-creative healing. It's where we're headed on this path to healing, to having a healed humanity is it's not, it, it starts in here and it seems like it's alone internally but then you find out oh i'm not alone i'm with my body and my mind and my emotions and they're all quite smart <laughs> and then you find it with your family and your friends you find it with your colleagues and then it begins to build and then there's going to be these souls who percolate in and say i want to work with you i want to create with you and that's what happened to meg and i so Meg, would you describe, because I think co-creation of healing, certainly what we made while we were doing it together helped us heal. It did for me for sure. And, and I suppose it did for you, but I wanted to look at that. Once you've been playing with these, this lifestyle of light, you end up pulling in co-creative efforts that will totally make different kinds of levels of ego show up that are new and fresh. Both of us had that for sure. A lot of worthlessness, a lot of arrogance, and uh, especially the arrogance for me. But the examination of it becomes even more pronounced, doesn't it? It, it really causes then, oh, I, I have another soul witnessing me and I'm in witness to them and whoa, wow, now I see even more. Let's share it together, let's do it together. and. That's the next step, isn't it? What do you think about that? Would you speak to that a little bit? Well, I love, I love that the words just co-creation of healing because it is true, right? It is true that there's a point in time at which 
um, you know, you could work on yourself alone forever, but I mean, maybe you'll run out of, of, of things to work on. I don't know. But the moment that you step out and you start to have interaction, whether it's with a partner or a creative partner or a family or a, um, a community, uh, it's bound to bring in and bring up, you know, the collective, uh, another layer of collective gunk, so to speak. But if you are in a lifestyle of, of light, like we're talking about, then we, like, I trust that I'm going to do the work. And I know that Elizabeth's going to do the work on her end. So I don't have, we don't have to ping off each other's um, uh, uh, resistances or triggers. We both are taking, you know, sovereign 100% responsibility for our own stuff that comes up. And that produces something almost intangible, unnameable, but it almost, the way I kind of see it, it's almost like this, this ladder of light where we are both helping each other to um, dream each other to a, to a higher plane of uh, existence, to a higher level. It's, of course, not higher, but there's no language to describe it, right? A more expansive version of ourselves together while we are both in creative mode, because now we're being conscious creators, right? And we're learning as we go, okay, what is Elizabeth's specialty? What's Meg's specialty? I know the first time I sat down to do the first module, and I was like, oh, what am I going to do, you know? And yet, you know, I know how to like process through some of my own resistance. And the next thing you know, just kind of connecting with you, Elizabeth, and connecting with what our intention was, words just started to flow through and it, ju it just came out. And I think it was the same thing with you too. There might've been, you know, we had the resistances here and there, but the moment that we would get on, let's say an audio recording or a, um, a Zoom meeting with, with our folks, it would just start to click in. We could almost tap into that sovereign aligned um, David space. You're right. I love what you said, like burning on both ends. We got to step into our sovereign self and then be our two essences, our two sovereign selves together simultaneously. That's like, wow, that's right. That produces a high of sorts almost uh, in a way that we are heightened in our awareness. We're heightened in our aliveness. We're heightened in our uh, light. And then that, you know, pulls the other one up and pulls the other one up. And so we are both raising our our light, our frequency simultaneously, because I don't know about you, because I'm feeling it now, but I would always get off our calls in a heightened state, you know, and be like, oh, let's do that again, right? So then it's not work, you know, you're coming on to play and to get more light, like, hello, that's the best case of all scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. I love the ladder, and we've been kind of experiencing that a lot this year too, this ladder, when people are practiced, then they do it kind of automatically. It becomes a lifestyle and that it's just gently consistently happening all of the time. The soul gets used to being in that witness state and then co-creation opportunities show up. These souls that are in the same alignment or in the same uh, frequency, wavelengths, whatever, the then when you're together and that's exactly what happened we talk talk of talk about what we were going to talk about <laughs> and then we get on and it became so rich it became rich because it was dignity and wonder together creating a different song that didn't exist alone in each of us but could only exist in harmony and it's truly a harmony and that harmony it it builds a crescendo that you can ride that ladder of heightened awareness until you feel so home and you feel so comfortable and you actually feel totally present and love and full of light in that moment. And I think that's what we want to give people in this transmission a taste of. The, you can tell Meg and I love each other. We're friends. And that, you know, behind the scenes, Meg calls me out on stuff. And I help Vice Meg certain things, right? It's not like we're just here patting each other on each other's backs. 
at all. It's not ever been like that. It's always been like, well, you could say it a little differently like this, tweak it here and here and here, and this is how the frequency would feel different. Or, you know, hey, Elizabeth, <laughs> uh, check yourself on this one. Uh, this reaction, um, notice it, go back into your body. You know, we, we remind each other of the practices. I'm far less embodied than Meg is. But we remind each other of these practices each moment. And as we co-create, it builds, it builds, it builds this momentum, this light. It magnifies all the light. And then we get to share it. We get to pour it through. And then eventually it became an actual thing that was not just words. It was a complete program. And this is so fabulous because much, and we'll kind of, I want to segue gently into that. What we created, it's got 20 hours of video and audio, but it also is gentle. It's incredibly gentle. You'd think with that many hours of video and audio built into it, and then you've got photographs that Meg took, you've got writing that we both worked on, you've got different kinds of blessings you've got and and the writing is is short but powerful paragraphs really not long pages of stuff to read because that's not what we did we we wove it so it's so pure and so sort of uh, concentrated that you only need to read a paragraph to get exactly what we're talking about and then the pictures, they go right along into it. They inspire the subconscious and the inner self to have a visual that represents the energetic we're putting through. And then on top of it, audio and video too, that's with us interacting with people and answering questions and being ourselves, but also the co-creative momentum of light. And this became then the, the, it, it, it's the end part of the process. It becomes then a jewel, a jewel of co-creation that exists in perpetuity beyond us. It will exist beyond us in time and space. <laughs> it exists beyond Meg and I in that, you know, when we finally leave these bodies, this will be a part of the legacy we leave for humanity and it's that powerful. And did we know it was going to be a legacy for humanity when we were doing it? I certainly did. No. <laughs> That's what it became. It's what it became because we, we felt the draw to work together. We listened to source. We obeyed <laughs> and surrendered to the, the desire that was far beyond us. It came from our essences. It came from source directly to create and then to offer and to serve. And then from there, it, it immensely transformed us much faster than before because we were willing to play together in this light and it magnified our light on top of it. And first, I haven't actually got to say this out loud on a public platform, but Thank you, Meg, because without you and without what we did, I wouldn't be the person I am now, as happy as I am now. I wouldn't be as light as I am now because of you. Thank you. You, you showing up in my life and being a co-creator and doing the work, you have changed me. And I thank you so much for what you've given me in that co-creation. I'm so proud that we got to do that. Mm. Me too, you're welcome. And I'm receiving that. I think that's the, that's the unplanned grace and the unplanned gift that we wanna then forward, right? Because you, you, you can only go so far with words and I appreciate everyone listening because like you said, we're trying to transmit the the essence of it, the feeling of it. It's not, it's not something you can read at the book and get. This is something that you have to live. And, and, and in, this, in this experience that we, we put together, we share so much of our own personal lives. I think that's one of the main keys is that 
this is not theory. This is experiential. And we share pretty, pretty deep and, and vulnerable and raw things that have gone on in our like, relationships, in our lives, in our struggles, and our challenges. Um, and this is, and this is a, a gift for me too, because it, I'm sure there's so many people out there who just want to be in service right now, right? They just want to contribute to this, this world. And, and this to me has, has been a, a model for me of how to do that in co-creation because it's so hard to do it on your own, but to do it with someone else, it becomes so much easier because we're both, you know, we're both really what I found listening for each other. You know, if I'm not at the top of my, you know, game, if I'm not as aligned in a particular day, you're listening or I'm listening on a day that you're not. And that's what we do for each other. And I think if you take that and multiply that out, you know, add another, add another, that's what we're talking about. We're hoping to, to share this relationship model of how to create and co-create through the tools of healing yourself. That's how you heal the world, right? Yeah. And it's so profound. It's not simple. It sounds simple. It's not. <laughs> And we're not on. We're not underestimating how powerful this can be, at all. And I think it's that's key. That um, this is a direct, narrow, and very powerful path that's steeper than other paths. <laughs> um, you want to get to the top faster. This is how you do it. And at first it's tough and then you start getting used to it and you build up your stamina and your strength. And then you start finding others around you who are doing it too. And you're attracting them because, well, you're on the same road and it's so beautiful. And then you help each other up. I got you, I got your hand. Let's get higher together every day. So profound. And so with that, we wanna give you that chance to have that play. But we also want to give you a chance to work with us directly as well. So we have two packages that we're offering you from this interview platform. We have the interactive ebook, which is 90 pages. It's packed full of lay woven photography, pictures, reading to do, audios and video. It's a seven week program. And like I said, if you want to pound through it faster, do it. If you want to take your time slower, do that. The suggestion was to do it for seven weeks and people found it actually useful to do it in that way. And along with that particular package, package A, we're offering you to come join us on Slack. Meg and I are on our little community. We call it the circle community on Slack. It's, it's a really great, uh, platform. It's also on an online app for your phone or whatever, but it's supportive. We're there. There's a very supportive community and there it's about a hundred strong right now. It'll probably get bigger sooner, but we're, we're very, very supportive of all viewpoints of all facets of life. And we want to help you through those seven weeks, that whole community can be there at your back because they know this stuff. Most of them, <laughs> And then the second package, package B, we give you that, but we also want to give you some one-on-ones, a one-on-one -on -one with, with Meg and a small group call. I've made my groups called smaller of four people. The one-on-one -on -one with Meg, a half hour, I highly recommend because Meg is, has been cultivating and really been working very closely with mystics who can do this, but cultivating the ability to perceive blockages and honestly, to be truly seen by somebody, especially someone so compassionate and non-judgmental as Meg is a treasure. So if you're not sure what the block is or the polarity, Meg's going to show that to you. She's a pure mirror that's great to be able to be seen. And um, I, who rarely get to truly be seen, it feels so good to be seen. <laughs> it feels so good to be seen, to truly be seen with pure love. And Meg has that. She's got that space for you. Go sit in that space and receive this. You deserve it for yourself, for your soul. 
for your evolution. And in the small groups, the reason instead of doing one-on-one -on -one is because you get to hear three other people's readings. And every time I've done a group, everyone who's ever done them says, I love these. I want to do groups instead of one-on-ones with you because I get to see so much more with the readings from others. And usually source will put the exact right people together. And it can be really mind blowing exactly who shows up <laughs> these group calls. And then you get to experience all these readings that are all gonna be useful to you because they're human, they're human readings. <laughs> and so that both of these is something we wanted to give you a chance to connect with us. And, and I usually limit how many people I'll do this for and I'm not doing that this time. I'm not doing that this time. So I, I know that Meg's connection with you, the combination of these two readings from either of us, the Slack group, and this full blown immersion into true processing tools that are for the modern era, where we're at now, to help you navigate all the trauma, drama, and difficulty and finally get to your essence and finally get to the expansive lifestyle of light you've been wanting. You can't go wrong with this, right, Meg? <laughs> <laughs> you can't really mess up on this one. This is, this is complete. It's a nice, complete foundation for anyone to move forward on. Would you like to add anything about what we're offering or your feelings or, or in your invitation? Yeah, no, I want to... I just want to underline and underscore how, how vital this is. Um, just tracking back to the, the fire engine that went by at the beginning of the call, that we're, our, our noses are up against the wall, and this is a way through. It's the way that you and I have found that works most um, effective. It's a potent, hard way that, uh, I'll tell you the truth, most people are not going to choose it's not easy. It's not easy to turn towards even the, the darkest parts of us or the lightest part. You know, that's, we also talk about that in the interactive ebook is how to process the light. And we really haven't touched on that today, but to process the light, most of us have to get used to this much joy, this much energy. It's not easy. And so, um, so don't underestimate the, the value of this strong foundation to go as high as you want to go. You know, every day I say I'm 100% committed to 100% awakening and 100% remembering right now. And I take that seriously. This is, I know you too, Elizabeth, this is our, our path and we are, we are not stopping, right? Mm -hmm. And so we want, we want to give you this and give you the support too, because it's not it's easy for some people to do a self-study, but not for everybody. And so we want to give you the support to help you. Uh, at least, you know, help you along the way to start. And, and we're always available for you anytime. So, but we want to be here for you to, to help you learn these tools, the gift. Ah, so precious. And with that, my friends, you heard it. Meg is 100% willing. And that means that when you show up to be with Meg, you're getting that 100% and much more really because it's far beyond Meg, it's true source power. It's light, it's empowerment, it's the essence of dignity. And just to be able to receive that today, I hope will really give people a chance to feel into their bodies, Meg, to feel the dignity of their body, just as it is right this moment. The dignity of their soul, their emotions, and their mind, the dignity of their ego. Yeah. And with that, with that, there there is that chance for you to play and, and revel in it. Allow it to linger in your field. Let Meg's energy and transmission of dignity linger today and for the rest of the year of 2020. Allow that beautiful sort of flowery energy and sense to be available to you in your mind when you're wondering where you are and if you can get out of the hole you're in i want you to imagine the dignity of existence as transmitted through meg today 
And thank you so much, Meg, for this transmission. You're welcome. I love you. I love you too. Namaste, all of you. God bless in every way. We are here for you. And again, I am so proud that I got to speak to Meg today. Please do consider connecting with Meg. And your website is? It's soulworkforwomen.com. Soulworkforwomen.com. Yeah. And she doesn't just work for women, of course, but please, yeah, no. all of the masculine, go hang out with Dignity. You're going to thank me. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I get so many people calling up now saying, do you just work with women? I'm like, well, I started, but um, the men are in it too now. So it'll eventually probably just be soul work. So. Um, oh, very good. Yes. And you are a true soul worker. Awesome. It's hard to say goodbye. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem that we have but thank you thank you everybody for uh, for tuning in and and actually I just invite you right now to come back into your bodies and to um, experience gratitude thank yourself for giving yourself this time and thank yourself for all of the challenges and and, and hardships that you've had because they're here to serve you and we love that we love that about you and we love that about us so thank you Elizabeth for, thank thank you. for hosting of course, my pleasure. Namaste, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.